In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Father, I ask you humbly that you help us to listen to this gospel in the time of Lent, that you can help us to live this time fruitfully. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. And Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, there were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his or orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none, so cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. This Gospel of uh, today, second Sunday of Lent, is one of these Gospels which shows Jesus uh, speaking to us through a paradox. Jesus often tried to provoke people into thinking. So people come to Jesus and tell him a story about some people who met a tragic death. It's a Pilate who mingles the blood of sacrifice with the blood of victims, some people that they killed. So basically at the moment of death you become impure. It's a tragedy for any Jewish people. And people would speak about it with the intention that those people were very, very un unfortunate. And they had this conviction or belief that if you are so unfortunate, if you cannot have children, if you have a leprosy or something terrible and awful happens to you, there is a God behind it punishing you severely for some sins, perhaps hidden sins that nobody know. And they presume that if you are good, nothing bad will happen to you. And Jesus then says this paradoxical thing. Of course, there's bad things that happen to these people, but not because they are bad. But if you do not repent, same thing will happen to you. It's paradoxical because when Jesus says the same thing will happen to you, it means that you do something wrong. You don't repent and then something terrible happens to you. So on one hand Jesus says bad things don't happen because people did bad, but if you stop, don't stop doing bad, bad things will happen to you. But of course Jesus here, he often throws it at the people to penetrate their heart and to ponder these things and find solution to that paradox. And then he says a second part of this gospel, the story about the fig tree that explains it very well. So first of all, Jesus is clear. This idea, presumption, that bad things happen only to bad, th bad people and that somehow you're being punished in car accidents, sickness, cancer, others, is a punishment because you are not good enough. It's nonsense. It's not, it's wrong. But then he says something uh, more profound, namely, Jesus criticized this idea that people have that there are good and bad people. That's not biblical or Christian thinking. We can think that any action is bad. Let's say, you know, to steal is bad. To punch someone in the face is bad. But to say, oh, this person is often violent and he punches people in the face, therefore he is a bad person and you label him as a bad person, it's already wrong idea. We never, church, Catholic church, for example, never ever sent anyone to hell, never labeled even big criminals, so I don't know, Stalin, Hitler, the church doesn't say they are for sure in hell for the things they did. Christ was very clear in saying, telling us, do not judge, don't judge anyone, don't condemn. God will do the justice at the final day, and only God alone 
can judge people. And then Jesus also explains it that, or even more I would say, we, we, we commonly not only think that some people are bad, but we also commonly think that some people are good. And behind that thinking, this is idea that we have, that when people are bad, it is their fault. They don't try hard. Uh, they make wrong choices. It's their fault that they are bad. And the good people, they are good because they work hard on themselves, because they strive to do good things, and, and they have a fruit of their good things. It's not so. And Jesus says the second parable to confront that thinking. He says that soul is like a plant. And then God comes and fertilizes this plant, digs him around, waters this plant, to the point that the plant gives a fruit. But when the fruit comes, how much it is the merit of the plant and how much it is a, a merit of God. If God didn't water it down, no fruit would come there. If God didn't dig out the weeds and protect it from wild animals, nothing good would come from that plant. If the plant says, oh, it's me, all the goodness, all the fruits are mine, I did it, the plant is deceived. That's why in this life we have no clue who is good, who is bad. We can judge the actions, yes, this is a good action, this is a wrong action, this is a sin, this is good, but not people behind it. And Jesus says, unless you repent, unless you change your thinking into proper God's thinking, bad things will happen to you. And what is the bad thing? And this parable says it clearly. If you stay in your thinking about bad and good people, you will be take off, you will be cut down. You will be like a plant that is cut and thrown from the kingdom of God. If you want to belong to the kingdom of God, you need to bring fruits. If you don't bring the fruits, and parts of these fruits is think well about everyone, justify people all the time, be kind and merciful and forgiving, and never enter this talk, oh, this is a bad people, these are good people, you will, if you don't repent of that thinking, you will be cut and thrown away. And that's, the, the word repent is very important for the time of Lent. It's a time of repentance. There is this, Jesus also tried to stress it, that to focus on others, why this, these people died, why he has a cancer, why terrible things happen to others, can distract you from something fundamental God calls you to do. And what is this fundamental thing is? Repent. Repent meaning, I am looking into myself. I am searching for what I did wrong. And I bring, and there is this fundamental question in a time of Lent, we all are asking of ourselves. Am I giving fruits God wants me to give? Am I really giving fruits? God is working on me, speaking to me, loving me, forgiving me. Which fruit He wants from me? What kind of love? What kind of forgiveness? What kind of behavior? What kind of speech? And we try our heart and we search for those defects of ours. I know God called me and prepared me to give many fruits and perhaps I give only a few. For every fruit that is missing, I am repenting. I am sorry, God. So I focus on myself. The, the others, their things, their sins, their good actions, their issues is in the background. My primary focus is God. Am I really a tree you want me to be? Does joy and hope and love and mercy come from my heart? If it's not enough, if I am find a shortage of those, I really repent, Lord. I am a bad tree. You put lots of fertilizer, you put lots of water, and there is a tiny little fruit there hanging. I am really sorry, Lord. I am really sorry. Have mercy on me. Give me one more year. Don't cut me out of your people. Have mercy on me. And that's the attitude Jesus is looking for from us. Holy Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters in this time of Lent that they can live this time of Lent in a spirit of repentance and that they can, in honesty and truth, stand in front of you and receive forgiveness. We ask this for Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a good Sunday. God bless you.